Okay, in this video, we are doing Calc AB problem set 48. The problems, any playlist are in the description below, and uh, let's do it. Use the graph of F prime shown above to answer the questions. Where is F of X increasing and why? So we're looking at F prime, so F will be increasing when F prime is greater than zero, um, which is here and here. Um, so I'm gonna say that F of X is increasing on uh, zero inclusive to two, and 10 to 16, including 16, because F prime is greater than zero there. I do, th you can switch the order and say that um, F prime is greater than zero on um, zero inclusive to two, and then 10 to 16 inclusive. Therefore, F is increasing on, and then close all of them. So zero to two, including zero and two, and 10 to 16, including 10 and 16. Personal choice, doesn't matter which one you do. Uh, I've written down the one that I've gone with here but just be aware. Um, find the x-coordinates of the relative minimum or minimums of f of x and justify. So we would need f prime to go from negative to positive, which only happens at 10. So I'm gonna say that f of x has a relative minimum at x equals 10, and my reasoning is because f prime changes negative to positive there. All right, let's see what else we got. Part C, uh, find the intervals on which f of x is decreasing and concave down. All right, so decreasing means that we're gonna be below the x-axis, below the horizontal, and then concave down means that f prime will be decreasing because that would mean f double prime is negative, which means that f is concave down. So we're looking for f prime to be negative and decreasing, which will happen here and here. So that is from two to four, and then also from six to eight. So let's write that. So f of x is decreasing concave down on two to four and six to eight, and the reason will be f prime is negative or less than zero and decreasing on those intervals or there. Uh, find the x-coordinates of the points of inflection of f of x and justify. There are a lot of points of inflection. So it's all the relative maximums and minimums, which remember relative maximum does not include endpoints. So even though it looks like at zero and at 16, we have relative maximums, not counting them. They're, they're not a part of it. And usually this question would say on the open interval from zero to 16, I wrote the problem and you know, I do my best, but I don't always write perfect problems. Um, so we're gonna go with points of inflection at four, six, eight, not 10, 12 and 14. Uh, and my reasoning will be F prime has relative extrema. So let's list them. And then we will say, because F prime has relative extrema at those points or there, um, so reading the graph of a first derivative is like a really big deal. Once you get good at it, these problems are very straightforward and you kind of hope that you're asked these questions until then, you know, they can make you a little bit nervous. So you should put some effort into making sure that you can look at a graph of a derivative and tell basically everything about the function. You want to know increasing, decreasing, concave up, concave down, maximums, minimums, uh, points of inflection, uh, I think that's everything, but anything else that you're supposed to know also. Next question. Find dy dx for x squared y minus y cubed equals 2x plus 5. A lot of implicit differentiation in these problem sets. All right, so we're going to take the derivative with respect to x of both sides. It looks like this. For the left-hand side, we're going to do a product rule on x squared y, and then everything else, pretty simple. Don't forget the chain rule when you take the derivative with respect to y. So here goes. First, derivative of the second is dy dx. Second is y, derivative of the first is 2x, derivative of 3y, no, sorry, y cubed is 3y squared dy dx. So 3y squared, that's where the chain rule is coming in because we know that y is a function of x. So it's like you're really finding the derivative of something cubed. That'll be three times that thing squared, the derivative of that thing, the derivative of that thing in this case is dy dx. That's where that comes from. On the right-hand side, the derivative is just two because it's with respect to x. And then, uh, so the, I'm gonna move the 2xy to the right, and I'm gonna divide through by x squared and minus 3y squared because that is the overall coefficient of dy dx. So my final answer is dy dx is two minus 2xy all over x squared minus 3y squared. All right, that's actually the entire problem set. So uh, I hope this was helpful and good luck.